Hello, I'm Lucy. And I'm Scott. We're from Book Act and we are here to tell you about two recent reads. Right, so we're trying something new, you guys. It's a joint review. Is it team, new? Team review. I'm sure we've done it before. Have we? I'm sure we have. Okay, it clearly I'm went sure, I'm sure so well. I'm sure we fake news it. I'm sure you fake news that. Bo blocked it from my mind. Okay. Yeah. Um, Total Films. We're back with another joint review. <laughs> what are you reviewing, Scott? What are you uh, reviewing? I read it. Oh, I read The Wall by John Lanchester. And I read Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. It's really shiny. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. Isn't it a good looking one? Um, shall I talk what first? What was it about? Shall I talk first? Yes, I'll let you go first. Yeah. Okay, so this is basically a historical novel. It is set um, in England around the Oxford area on the banks of the River Thames, but sort of, you know, upriver from the River Thames that you know about. It is set in, I'm going to say, the 19th century. I don't think it's does it matter? Said probably the olden days. It was said in the olden days. Yeah. Um, and right, what happens? So it has got a really high drama opening. It is um, in a pub. A man bursts through the door. He is battered, black and blue, and he is carrying the body of a dead child who has drowned in the river. Oh wow! Yep. They put the child in the, back, in the back room. It is a conversation <laughs> stopper. The pub stops chatting, which is actually, although you don't know it, quite significant because <laughs> um, there's a lot of this story that is about storytelling. Um, but the storytelling in this public house stops. They stick the dead child in the back room um, while they patch up the, the broken man. But then, several hours later, she awakes. And the story then unfolds um, because this child is mute, she's about four years old, the, the, the different people that come and lay claim to her, three different um, families as it were, or three different people come and say, we know who this girl is, she belongs to us. Oh. Um, Intriguing. It is really, it is a great opening. It's really. If good. she could talk, it would have ruined the story. I but. did think that several times. I was like, this would be resolved so much quicker if she could just say what she Conveniently, was Conveniently, she was mute, yeah, you know. Yeah, but... Um, Actually, because it's got such a high drama opening, there is, for me, a bit of a lull then in the tension. Um, we go back and there's a lot of scene setting um, and things like that, and a lot of characters are introduced, and they are beautifully introduced, and um, the storytelling is one of the real strengths of this book, but actually it did mean that the tension dropped a little bit for me. The, the strength of this book, like I said though, actually, is the storytelling and the way that it's told, because it's told in this really authoritative um, voice, a really sort of lofty um, voice that looks down, sort of like telling a campfire story. It's got a real campfire vibe to it, actually. Um, and it talks to the reader. It's like performative prose. So saying, you know, well, you know then this happened, or um, as you will realise, or, or things like that. So talking to the reader, and I really liked it. And the themes that go Does through it... Does this ever spoil itself? Because that actually annoys me in books when, like, as you will find out in the... No, it doesn't go, doesn't doesn't go that, do that far. Doesn't okay. um, well, Maybe a tiny little bit, but not, um, not spoilerish. I think it's more like um, tease... Uh, yeah, I'd say teasers rather than mm -hmm. spoilers. I read somewhere that... Somebody else described this book as wholesome. I can't remember who it was. It was one of the papers. I'm sorry. And I actually really agree with that um, as a description of it. Because what this story is, is like a good versus evil story. There is no, um, no blurring of the moral lines anywhere through it. There's, you know, you know what the outcomes should be. Whether or not they're going to get there is another matter, but you know there are clear-cut goodies and baddies, and we're never challenged um, to go off those paths, I think, really. And for me, that lessens the tension a bit, again. Um, I think, you know, you always know to a degree what the outcome is going to be, if not the detail of it, sort of um, the spirit of it, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, so it's not like a breathtaking, page-turning read, but it is one um, that unravels in a way that I found really satisfying. And the ending is satisfying, actually. It's pretty neat and wholesome, um, but I, I still felt that it was believably so. So overall, for me, I think um, it's a really gripping plot. 
um, if at times there are little lulls in it, mm -hmm. but um, the storytelling and the style in which it's told and the language and the, the river metaphor that runs through and is embedded really deeply and brilliantly into everything makes it a totally worthwhile read. So there you go. Cool. I liked this book. You liked it? I liked this book. Did what you shelf? like that what book? Shelf? Oh, if you don't know what we mean, go three. check out bookaxe.com. It's but. probably a shelf three, because I don't think it's going to change anyone's life. Yeah. You know, I probably won't remember it on my deathbed, but I enjoyed it. And I didn't put it down to check my phone, which is the test that's, that's, of that's the good a good book. Test. That's a good test. Um, so there you go. That's my book test. Yeah. Did you enjoy that book? Hey. Yeah. No. Nah. Um... You can't ask me that before I review it. You always, you better like leave leave the audience hanging. And now, now everyone's going to oh, he's, he's read a rubbish book. I then. always I'm like I love this book. Or, oh, you guys, I didn't love this book so much, and here's why. It's just, yeah. You see, this is why we were like stop doing the team reviews because you know. Yeah. No. So so the wall by La John Lancaster. It's about a wall. Um, so. <laughs> Can we, for, for, for me, see, see, you're rolling your eyes, oh, your eyes, but this pretty much is the story. Um, so, so the main character, the main protagonist, is someone called Kavanagh, and he gets sent to defend the wall for two years. Not a day more, not a day less. It is his task, and essentially everyone within, and I, when we mentioned this the other day, it's not clear it was UK, but actually later on in the book it is. Everyone in the UK in in this fictional future, dystopian future has to do a two-year, almost conscription, get sent to defend the wall from the others who were on the other side. And the wall... So the wall, Yeah, the wall's all the way around the country, and it's actually... We live much, on an island, do yeah, we need a wall? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, I, I, it's quite hard not to spoil the book okay. as to why they may or may not need it, but they, they, they tried to plan a load of um, topical themes. So, so I, I was trying to read into this, and he sort of... It's a whole load about walls being built at the moment around the globe. So, yeah. so there was that being played. I think I know, might know where he got his inspiration. Yeah, but there, there may even be, when I was reading this, because obviously Brexit's such a big thing here and all this isolation, mm. is, there may be some sort of references or to the political movement around that, at least early on. And then there are potentially some global warming stuff in there as well. So, so sort of it's trying like, to touch... I'm going to take all the issues and cram them into And one talk book. about a wall. A wall. Um, so, so that's the thing. So he gets sent to the wall, which is cold. Um... It's quite cold in Britain at the moment. Yeah. So, and basically, your life while you're tying the wall is spending 12 hour shifts watching to see if anyone's going to attack. So, that's pretty much the beginning of the book. Obviously, the story takes a few is twists. It, is there a plot? A marginal plot, I would say. There is a marginal one. Um, and you meet a few other characters. You do follow his life over the two year period on the wall. Um, so, it, it moves quite slowly at first. And then. Incidents happen to the wall, which impact directly Kavanagh's life. And I genuinely, this is one of these books, I, I can't really say much more without spoiling it. And in terms of, did I enjoy it? For me, the plot, the back end, everything was just way too convenient. And didn't really have that, that punch, because although I joked about it, trying to cover all the topical issues, they were there and they were signalled early on in the book, but they were never realised. They never, like, as if, like... Oh, it was there to flag, but there was no like real punch pack. There was pick one issue and do it properly. Yeah, and it wasn't. It just wasn't really followed through. Like the sort of isolation. It's it's that sort of. That's clearly what the theme is here. But it just to me, it doesn't deliver on it. Um, so yeah, in terms of bookshelf shelves, it, it's gone straight into the. Oh bottom. no! What's the style of writing like? The I'm style of writing is quite. No, actually, I because I was again when we discussed this that's in the week in the books. Term. Yeah, no, when we, chapter two randomly does go all, um, all very... What's the technical word for that? Literary? Liter very literary, <gasps> but, but you can it's see... It's Christmas tree! Yeah, no, exactly, there's little poems, there's Christmas trees, and like, early on, like... Don't know if you guys can see Really, that. really playing with style, and if you can't see that. Um, so I was, when I commented in the Week in Books a couple of weeks ago, Thought, yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be like that. But actually, chapter two is the only one where it does it. And actually, the prose, everyone That's else a is bit actually weird. The prose is actually pretty readable throughout the rest of the book. And I've got quite a. I like simple prose. Um, I like strong political messaging to a book, but pretty simple writing. And it, it actually delivers yeah. on that. It just didn't really deliver on the political messaging all the way through. And also, the storyline mm. doesn't really Interesting. do it any justice. Oh, so, well, yeah. there you go. There you go. I don't 
I don't know if I'll be picking that one up based on your description, frankly. No. And I'm sure John Lanchester will be on here giving me loads of down thumbs, you know. He can only give or you not. one. He can <laughs> only give you one. He might get his agent and his publisher to give you one. So if we've got three down thumbs on this video, it's John Lanchester, his agent and his publisher. There you go. Yeah, his mum might, his mum might take And his mum, number four. There you go. So there you go. Um, that was it. The Wall and Once Upon a River. I think this book is winning out of the two of them. Although <laughs> I think probably they've got I, I, a I different I actually quite crowd. fancy the sound of that one. I think, I actually think you might like this. Mm. I think it's probably a gentler read yeah. than you do sometimes enjoy. But anyway, it's good. I'm not going to go back because if you, I'll, start, I'll start reviewing it again. He'll be like, shut up. <laughs> 20 minutes on the video. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Cool. Should we go do some reading? Yep. Go okay, read some books. Thank you very much for watching. If you have thoughts on either of these books, you've read them, you fancy them, you don't fancy them, please do talk to us in the comments below. In the meantime, check out bookx.com and the apps completely free, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.